we're good. So getting back to this whole, what kind of Jesus are you? So, uh, this defying authority, there's a meme going, going around the internet that says, uh, you know, there's that whole WWJD, what would Jesus do, movement. It's kind of uh, dated now, but 15 years ago it was a big deal. People had little bracelets and all that kind of thing. So, uh, But there's a meme on the internet that says, the next time somebody asks you what would Jesus do, keep in mind that kicking over tables and whipping people uh, is is one of the possibilities. So, you know, I like that. I, I don't want to get carried away with it. Um, and I think uh, I would I would personally would be quick to point out that there's nowhere in the, in the text of the Bible that it says that Jesus actually whipped anybody. Uh, he did chase people away with a whip, um, but you know. It never says that he actually whipped anybody. <laughs> so uh, I think it's kind of an important point. I don't think it's a major point, but I think it's an important point. Um, so that, that's pretty interesting. So the, uh, the bottom line is, you know, when you keep in mind that a person can devote their lives to a portion of what Jesus did, or, a, or maybe even something that he did on occasion, or maybe something that he did only once, um, that then you could take this example of him clearing the temple with a whip and uh, violence against inanimate objects. I, I, again, there is no record of Jesus ever, uh, you know, acting out violence against people. Uh, but he did kick over the tables and he did he did swing a whip. But whether he hit anybody with the whip, I, I don't know. There's, it doesn't, it doesn't say whether he did or whether he did not. It just says that he chased them out with a whip. That leads me to believe that he didn't whip anybody. It just means that he, he scattered people, disrupted, you know, so kind of an agitator kind of an operation, you know. But, uh, so, you know, there are people that could have that calling, you know, just to uh, stir things up, you know. It's pretty interesting, I think. Um, because, uh, as you know, one of my passions is, uh, affirming and honoring God's creation as it was created. Um, you know, the Bible explicitly says that man, oh, I'm sorry, God made man in his image, male and female. So... You know, he went to the trouble to specify, hey, there's men and there's women. <laughs> so it's none of this, uh, you know, crazy stuff with men having their genitals cut off and injecting themselves with whatever, whatever, and the women having things attached and whatever. I mean, they can do all kinds of crazy stuff that, you know, doesn't mean, doesn't mean that you should do it, you know. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do that uh, you decide not to do because uh, you consider the possibilities and you say, yeah, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> I know I could, but I don't think I will. You know, so, uh, so that's kind of one of my passions, you know, and uh, it is true that throughout history, God referred to himself, uh, you know, in the masculine form. And clearly, the female form also came from God because we're not created in God's image until we're male and female. So, uh, you know, clearly uh, God possesses those fem female feminine qualities of nurturing, compassion, tenderness, uh, gentleness, uh, you know, and uh, obviously there are men that have those qualities in greater quantity than other certain women and you know, but just on average, you know, that's, you can kind of, uh, it's, it's kind of obvious that that's, those are, those are female traits, you know, and they're, they're trying to mess that all up too. So you have to, you have to, you have to double back and make all these disclaimers and because they, they just, you know, they're just basically trying to wreck humanity. I mean, that's, which by extension is wrecking God's creation, which by extension is basically declaring war on God, you know, because you 
wreck something somebody made, you know, you're, you are, you are provoking them, you know, so, uh, they're trying to provoke God, you know, so, I mean, there's movies out now with, uh, you know, and, it, and it's, it, apparently it's actually happening in the labs and stuff, I mean, everything you hear in the news is like, of, of cutting edge technology, it's, it's really like 30 to 50 years old, I mean, you know, they don't, they don't let you act, they don't, let you ha know what's happening right now because they don't want us expressing our opinions and interfering with their little experiments you know so uh, so everything you hear about the news is cutting latest greatest is, is actually 30 to 50 years old so but the stuff they're doing now is you know obviously growing human organs they're growing human bodies they're growing entire bodies you know inside of tanks but they're not tanks they're uh, they're brainless cows, so and they do they they grow they grow them inside of brainless cows so that the animal doesn't uh, you know sense in the terror of that kind of an existence you know just constantly being poked and prodded and just having some foreign thing growing inside of you. So apparently they're growing headless humans inside of brainless cows, and it's all just science, you know, uh, I heard on the radio today that the, uh, whatever, whatever university is in Austin, I think it's the University of Texas, I'm not sure, but, uh, that they're, that that's one of the, uh, that's one of the major hubs for these types of, uh, this type of experimentation, but the farms, they call them farms, uh, for this type of stuff are, they're all, they're all over, there's like more than a hundred of them, so, um, they're doing all this kind of stuff, and they're trying to create life out of silicon, and, you know, they're trying to find out what uh, sentient consciousness is and, and create it without having uh, organic, you know, material, uh, you know, playing the host for the consciousness. So, um, like, I, like I say, you know, we're not the scientists, we are the experiment, but... As the experiment, we're created in the image of the scientists that created us. So we we play like clumsy, silly, adorable children. Uh, we imitate the scientist that created us, you know. Uh, and when we rebel, then it stops being adorable, and we just become these defiant kids that do damage, you know, and a lot of, and a lot of that is what, what, what this stuff is all about. So interestingly, um, you know, Jesus said that just as it was in the days of Noah, so it, so will it be in the last days. And apparently all of the, uh, chimera images of the Egyptians, the men with the, uh, heads of hawks and the uh, lions with the bodies of bears or you know whatever the half whatever the whatever the, the chimeras were uh, all of that the Greek legends of the uh, men with the bodies of horses I don't know all the names of all these chimeras but anyway these inner species mixes uh, while they may not be exactly as the legend describes them or they may not be exactly as the paintings on the Egyptian walls portray them. Nevertheless, they're capturing the idea that all of this experimentation with genetics and, and life itself was going on at, at that <clears throat> at that exact same time, just like Jesus said, just like in the days of Noah. So it kind of brings to light or puts a new context on the whole concept of the flood. God didn't wipe out all life on earth just because he was angry. He wiped out all life on earth because mankind had tinkered with it, and it wasn't just mankind, it was also the angels that had been cast out of heaven, um, which, you know, they were mad at God because they, he said you could never go back to heaven, that's in the book of Enoch, which Jesus quoted from, and the early Christians regularly read from, and everybody. see, you can't have this, you can't have the book of Enoch around because that would ruin the whole, uh, you know, the, the, the great story of our day with evolution and statistical uh, chaotic uh, rise of life out of lifeless material and the Big Bang and you know all that stuff. So, um, so they've sublimated 
the, the books that the early Christians regularly, regularly read from and the books that Jesus and other writers of the Bible quoted from, they've sort of gotten rid of those because it interferes with their, the, 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 their plans to have this other narrative about the earth and the origins of the earth and mankind and the origins of mankind, etc., etc., etc. So, but in the book of Enoch, it says that uh, God banned these rebellious angels from heaven and locked them into earth, into the, 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 the firmament, the, sh the shell that covers the earth. They're locked, so they're pissed. They're angry. <laughs> Right? I mean, I don't know why it's funny, but it's funny just because it's things are not that things are not that complicated and mysterious. They're only complicated and mysterious because men make them com complicated and mysterious. And uh, some men don't want other men to know the truth because men want power. You know, I mean, if we knew how real God was, and how present God was, and how close God was, well, guess what? We wouldn't need all these other people to the degree that we need them. We would still need them, but we wouldn't look to them with the reverence and the awe that we look because we have other sources. We'd have another source of help, a much better source. And my friends here, so I can run. Peace out.